Today I'm making a small parts organiser. I reckon it's a cool little project and I'm making it from reclaimed flooring that a mate gave to me and the wood is boxwood. I'm attempting something different in this video by trying to make the whole project with pretty much just hand tools. I want to show that woodworking or any making isn't all about what tools you do and don't have. There's many ways to achieve the same result and only having hand tools or basic power tools shouldn't be an excuse not to give it a go. I'm planing down one edge of the floorboards and then I'll start ripping them into the stock that I need for the drawers. Here I'm planing down to the scribe lines and I did mark them on both sides of the board. That's all the stock prepared for the drawers and I reckon it turned out great. It really wasn't too difficult considering it's not something that I generally do. I'm excited to announce another Maker's Mob challenge. This free six week scrap wood challenge has been made to create an online woodworking experience where you can build alongside YouTube's top makers without having to leave your home or workshop. Starting on Friday, May the 1st, I'll be kicking off the first of six scrap wood challenges. I'll be releasing an in-depth step-by-step woodworking tutorial of this project to show exactly how I built it with all the details. Then on each following Friday, another maker will release their scrap wood challenge live on the Makers Mob. Click the link in the description to join for free and I look forward to seeing you there. Now I'll start cutting the pieces for the drawers. The two back pieces are identical and need mitres on either end. All the parts will become more clear as the video progresses. The project has four drawers in a layer and as I'm making four layers, I need 16 drawers. If you have a crack at making this yourself, you can make as many or as few layers as you want. That's all the back pieces of the drawers cut and after I plane off the varnish, I'll start cutting the fronts of the drawers. The drawer fronts need a hole drilling on one end so they can hinge off a fixed dowel and I'm marking the position with a marking gauge. I should have drilled the holes first before I cut them to length as they're very close to the end and they may break out but supporting it with a few pieces of stock did the trick. I know the cordless drill isn't technically a hand tool, but it's the closest thing I have and it's more of a hand tool than the drill press, which is what I would normally use for a task like this. 
The end of the drawer with the hinge needs a rounding over. That will provide clearance when the drawer is opened and closed. I always get asked what this tool is. It's a saw rasp and it did a great job of rounding these over. That's all the drawer parts cut and prepared for assembly. Before I do that though, I'll make a simple clamping jig to help with the process. I'm taping the joints mainly to stop the drawers sticking together while clamping in the jig. I glued and clamped all four drawers together as I thought it was the best chance of them fitting together afterwards and making a square layer. I'm labelling all the drawers so I know exactly where they go. I reckon the joints are probably strong enough for such a small drawer, but I'm going to reinforce them anyway with dowels. When I say dowels, I'm actually going to use bamboo skewers because I have them and they're the perfect size. Now I'll start cutting the drawer bottoms and I'm making them a good fit and then I'll be gluing them straight into the drawers without a rebate. They're such a small drawer and a rebate really isn't necessary. Now for the fun part, hand sanding 16 drawers, but at least there's no noise and the dust doesn't get all over the place. Now I'll start making a base, a top and some shelves. And for that I'm using some leftover plywood from my Mitosaur station build. I'm clamping them together before I plane them down and make sure that they're all square. I need to dress the plywood edges and for that I'll use another piece of boxwood flooring to make some edging.
I plane the edge of the board before ripping the next one. This leaves me with an edging with three clean and square faces. Next I miter the edging and cut them to length. I keep the rough sawn edge at the top and plane that down after it's been glued to the plywood shelf. After I tested and dry fitted all the strips I then started to glue them to the plywood and I made sure all the rough sawn sides were all facing up. I'll make the top exactly the same as the other plywood shelves, but this time I'm going to use marine ply because the top's exposed and the marine ply's a lot nicer. It's only quarter inch though and I need it to be half inch so I'll glue two pieces together. I squared up the one corner then marked the opposite edges. I did that with a knife so I get a nice clean edge as this is the top and it will be on show. I gave in here and I used the sander. I was running out of time and I wanted to get a coat of finish on them before the end of the day. It was back to noise and dust everywhere and shows why hand tools can be appealing. There'll be a dowel in each corner of the unit and I've decided to add another through the center to give the whole thing a bit more strength. To accommodate that, I need to take a chamfer off the back of each of the drawers. For the finish I'm using my usual mix of varnish, linseed oil and turps and they're mixed in equal quantities. After leaving it overnight I then apply a beeswax polish. Now I'm drilling holes in the base, shells and top for the dowels. They'll hold the whole thing together and will also be pins for the drawers to hinge on.
Gluing the nails into the base should actually strengthen the mitres on the edging. They'll act as a key and make a better bond than just the two flat faces of the mitre. They're a tight fit and they need a tap with a hammer to seat them. I check they all work as intended because once that next shelf is glued in position, there's no way those drawers are coming back out. One of the chamfers is hitting the centre dowel, stopping the drawer from going back quite enough. It was an easy fix though with a little sanding. And I think that's it. I'm applying some wax below the line to help with the hinge but I'm being careful not to put anywhere the shelf goes as that will have glue on and the wax will stop that from sticking. I'll put some masking tape around there to try and limit the chance of any glue getting down there. I've cut some thin strips and hopefully I'll be able to pull those back out afterwards. This part of the project has really had me scratching my head how to put it together and this is the best way I can think of. Maybe I'm missing something, maybe there's something more simple, but as long as I'm careful, it should work. Even though it looks very simple, it actually took quite a bit of figuring out how to get the four drawers to fit together and also make them hinge. I went through a fair few ideas until I reached this solution and this happened to be the most simple one. I've been worried about this stage throughout the whole project but it actually went really well. I made a base for it off camera because it's basically what I've already been doing and to make the organiser more useful I'm adding a Lazy Susan, a mate gave me a bunch of them and even though they look old they work perfectly fine. Next I'm installing some drawer pulls and the ones I'm using are perfect as they have a label holder too. It was a really fun project and I totally enjoyed using just hand tools for a change, well very nearly anyway. I hope it shows that you don't need every tool under the sun to complete a project and it inspires you to have a go and make something yourself. Don't forget to check out the free full length step by step tutorial on the Makers Mob by clicking on the link in the description and look out for the upcoming instalments from the other makers on the Makers Mob over the next six weeks. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.